It was the kind of report that no national leader wants to see leaked to the global press. A handful of small but shocking revelations that cast out onto a far more massive institution. On the 6th of January 2024, the Bloomberg Media Company revealed that according to multiple intelligence sources, widespread corruption within the Chinese armed forces has compromised China's military so badly that it's an open question whether China could even fight a war if it chose to. The news breaks just weeks after a major purge closed out 2023 at the head of the Chinese Communist Party and amidst a rapidly evolving geopolitical situation in East Asia and beyond. So in today's special episode of War Graphics, we're going to dig into the Bloomberg report and attempt to assess just how bad China's military problems really are, what's gone wrong, what China could do about it, and how this single, small piece of news might have dashed China's global ambition for years, if not decades to come. The Purge the revelations. At the highest level of China's internal politics, the events of Tuesday, October 24, 2023, were both earth-shaking for the CCP and entirely unsurprising from the perspective of an outside observer. On that date, Chinese President Xi Jinping made it official. After a short tenure in his post, Minister of National Defense Li Shangfu was out of a job, along with State Councillor and former Foreign Minister Qin Gang. By October, the official announcement had been a long time coming. Both men had disappeared from public view all the way back in the summer with no explanation, and their absence had been on full display during subsequent televised gatherings of the CCP's top decision makers. But as predictable as Xi's final announcement might have been, it still caps off an affair that had captured international speculation for months. Li Shangfu had gone from being a prominent general handpicked for the defense minister post to being out on his ass in less than six months. Councillor Qin had been pushed from his prior post as foreign minister and replaced all the way back in July. And they weren't the only ones either. The two officials who had until then led the Chinese military's rocket force had also been suddenly replaced, along with two other rocket force generals and a handful of other military leaders. These expelled leaders weren't bottom-of-the-barrel armchair generals either. Like Li Shangfu, they'd been hand-picked for their roles, seen as some of the very best and brightest rising stars that China had to offer. The two generals at the head of the rocket force have been instrumental in China's recent manned space missions and its launches of satellites into space. Another casualty of the purge, an admiral, had been a leader in China's effort to assert dominance in the South China Sea. Another was the president of the army's military court. Li Shangfu himself had been a trusted liaison with global partners and adversaries from Russia to India to the United States and was previously believed to be rather close to President Xi. But now, the whole group was gone, with Li Shangfu believed to be part of a rapidly broadening corruption investigation that may have played a role in some other disappearances as well. Now, in early January 2024, we've finally got a bit of a resolution. According to Bloomberg News, US intelligence has assessed that Xi Jinping's latest purge was indeed part of an effort to tamp down on corruption. But what it had found went far beyond individual cases of wrongdoing. To quote Bloomberg directly, the corruption inside China's rocket force and throughout the nation's defense industrial base is so extensive that US officials now believe Xi is less likely to contemplate military action in the coming years than would otherwise have been the case. Among the specific instances of graft that China allegedly uncovered were shocking failures by the rocket force. In one case, missiles were found to have their fuel compartments filled with water instead of, you know, fuel. In another case, not just one, not just a handful, but entire fields and fields of missile silos in China's western provinces were found to be fitted with malfunctioning or improper lids, meaning that if a launch order ever came to activate those missiles, they'd be unable to escape their silos at all. These would be devastating problems for any modern military. But a military with China's ambitions to be a global superpower, well, they're cataclysmic. In fact, it's Xi's long-held and very publicly amplified ambitions to make China's military world-class that makes these allegations by Western intelligence all the more stunning. Xi has long made it his mission to root out corruption across the Chinese government, including in the military, where he led prior purges to oust corrupt senior generals ever since he began his tenure in 2012. He's pledged that the Chinese military will be fully modernized by 2035 and stand among the best as a, quote, world-class military by the middle of the 21st century. That would mean, among other things, uncontested dominance in East Asia, the ability to rival or shout down Russia in Central Asia and the Middle East, and the ability to operate without military concern for the United States' ability to intervene in what she sees as his own part of the world. But it doesn't matter 
Whether China has more warships than the US, whether they've got hundreds of nuclear warheads, or whether their expanding fleet of aircraft carriers could eventually rival the US, if, after a decade or more of crackdowns, China's feared missiles are still powered by tap water. And amidst the Bloomberg revelations, other sources have suggested that similar acts of official graft within the military have been commonplace for years. According to an article published by Radio Free Asia, one former lieutenant colonel of the Chinese Navy described instances in which Air Force personnel had taken chunks of solid missile fuel and burned the stuff in order to cook traditional Chinese hot pot food. Said the former official Yao Cheng to Radio Free Asia Mandarin, when I was in the military, we would drain fuel from aircraft fuel tanks for cooking, which burns green and has no smell at all. We would eat hot pot. We would take out the solid fuel in the missiles piece by piece because there were insufficient supplies. Notably, Yao Cheng himself fled to the United States in 2016 with his testimony, thus indicating that acts like this have been commonplace for quite some time. The idea that China's military could be corrupt Certainly not a new one. For years, Western analysts have raised suspicions that the country's military officers have little incentive not to exploit the system, where oversight has been limited and rule enforcement has been toothless at best when an officer believes their own higher-ups will protect them from repercussions. But again, we've got to emphasize that the corruption referenced by Bloomberg goes well beyond what most experts assume China's military deals with on a daily basis. There's a massive difference between officials choosing to skim off the top of their budgets and officials taking actions that fundamentally disrupt China's ability to use its military capabilities in the first place. One, it's an inconvenience. The other is catastrophic. The fallout. All right, so Xi Jinping has a problem. But what happens now? On the one hand, the United States and other Western nations have kept a close eye on Xi standing within the CCP as his purges continue. And for the most part, the verdict seems to be that he will not personally suffer as a result. If anything, the purges have only cemented Xi's hold on the government, indicating implicitly that both he and the rest of the CCP believe he has a firm enough command on the party that these sorts of actions won't set off any sort of retaliation against him. Not only that, but the willingness of other Chinese officials to stand by and allow these corruption investigations to take place suggests widespread support of Xi's focus on enhancing China's military capabilities in the long run. On the other hand, though, these revelations are a critical blow to China's military readiness overall. The examples shared by Bloomberg are unlikely to be the only instances of this sort of corruption across the entire Chinese military, or even the only ones that Xi and the CCP have now learned about. What other problems might have been uncovered, we can't speculate, but whatever they are, they will and should lead to China significantly lowering its confidence in its own military readiness. In particular, confidence in the rocket force is most likely down the drain in what constitutes a major personal defeat for Xi himself. The rocket force has been a cornerstone of Xi's efforts to upgrade the Chinese military and has received substantial investment of both time and resources from the rest of the Chinese military to ensure that it's on the cutting edge. The rocket force is also critical for one other reason. It's this branch of the Chinese military that would almost certainly be pivotal in any Chinese attack on Taiwan. The rocket force manages the world's largest land-based missile arsenal, including hypersonic missiles, glide vehicles, ICBMs, and extremely accurate crews and ballistic missiles that would eventually be expected to devastate Taiwan in advance of a naval invasion. Taiwan relies on its ability to leverage serious firepower in a quick, make-or-break, all-out defense against a potential Chinese attack. And if the rocket force turns out to be incapable of crippling that Taiwanese defensive capability before the combat begins, then the chances of a successful Taiwanese defense increase exponentially. The CCP is, by now, well aware of just how devastating this sort of failure would be. They need only to look at their neighbor Russia, where the extent of its large-scale military corruption was revealed only after the Russian military proved vastly less capable than expected in its initial invasion of Ukraine. With the rocket force thoroughly compromised, China would have little hope of avoiding the same fate, meaning that any decision to invade Taiwan would now result in a far bloodier and more protracted invasion than China would have previously expected. And fixing this problem isn't so simple as draining out the fuel compartments of the impacted missiles and refilling them. Instead, the problem China now faces is one of endemic, deep-rooted corruption that will take years to come back from. 
Take the other problem reported by Bloomberg, a widespread problem with China's missile silos that would prevent its missiles from launching. Fixing the silos themselves will take a while, no matter what, but tack on the time it'll take to manufacture and ship large, complicated replacement parts even before installing them, and China's basically looking at a very long timeline before these silos become dependable. And most importantly, we'll say again, these are just the problems that the West knows about. How many other situations there might be, we simply don't know. But she certainly does. He and his government are under no obligation to report their corruption investigations, and in fact, they usually don't. But in the last few months, government probes within China have said that they're investigating additional issues from intelligence leaks to officials illegally helping companies secure government contracts. Finally, 2024's first publication of the Chinese military's official newspaper has signaled that this year will be a war on graft, thus indicating, of course, that there's enough graft to declare war on. However deep this corruption really goes within the Chinese military, it won't be easy to fight. Status is everything within the CCP's deeply intertwined military and political systems, and powerful officials who are still wrapped up in corrupt dealings will have every incentive to use that status to protect themselves and their underlings. You do not want to be disappeared into the underbelly of the Chinese Communist Party under any circumstances. And now that these officials know that more widespread investigations are coming, you can bet that they will do anything in their power to stop it. Regime change is likely far beyond their power to achieve, but obstruction, delays, and misdirection all risk prolonging this process longer and longer or leaving other fundamental issues hidden entirely. More obstruction means that Xi Jinping's clock keeps ticking, counting away hours, days, months, and eventually years in which both she and the rest of the world know that China is in no state to threaten Taiwan or anybody else. The Global Repercussions now, if you stumbled across this particular story over the course of an average day's doom scrolling, it's understandable that you might have chuckled at the headline, read a paragraph or two, and then moved on without a second thought. I mean, after all, global military superpower found filling its missiles with water is objectively a funny headline, no matter which way you slice it, the sort of thing you'd probably see on The Onion rather than Bloomberg News. But We've chosen to bring you this story in a hurry, not because it's fun to sit and laugh at the ineptitude of the Chinese military apparatus, although we'll grant you, it definitely is. Instead, we highlight these allegations because they're exactly the kind of information that's most important to pay attention to. They're the small, forgettable, even silly-sounding claims that go on to produce a seismic shift in geopolitics, with implications not just in China, but around the world. A few months ago, we hear a war of graphics published a piece examining that a wide range of factors in China, from an economic plateau to increasing diplomatic isolation to a looming crisis of demographics, are coming together to make a full-scale invasion of Taiwan less and less likely by the day. While that invasion isn't too terribly likely anyhow, given the major and growing deterrent value of militarily aligned America, Japan, South Korea, and others, we posited that at some point in the future, China will cross a threshold in which an invasion of Taiwan simply stops making any level of strategic sense. But cross that reality with these most recent corruption reports which indicate that China probably shouldn't be confident in its ability to launch a military invasion for at least the next several years. And now we've got to ask a much bigger question. Is a Chinese invasion of Taiwan now completely off the table? Certainly it would appear that now China has certainly every reason not to rush toward an invasion. The CCP is believed to have spent the last nearly two years watching Russia's invasion of Ukraine very closely, analyzing all the reasons why Russia's offensive fell apart. And now, it would take a certain level of delusion to avoid drawing parallels between Russia and China's own stunning corruption issues. Again, this kind of corruption in a national military is not unusual around the globe, but there is a massive difference between a military that exists mostly to help a third world dictator in a dick measuring contest and one that intends to overwhelm a regional military powerhouse like Taiwan in a shock and awe lightning offensive. That latter option just isn't going to happen. And with both Xi and the entire CCP known to be far more cautious about military action than Vladimir Putin's Russia has ever been, and it's very unlikely that China is going to try and launch an invasion before fixing its myriad issues. But if that invasion can't happen, then the CCP is immediately in a position where it's got to do some major rethinking of its long-term plans. There are a variety of elements of China's global ambitions that, by current thinking, cannot happen unless they're preceded by a successful Taiwan invasion, up to and including the ability to assert dominance in the South China Sea. 
So too does China's implicit threat of large-scale violence against its maritime neighbor become a whole lot less believable. After all, even if some of China's missiles are locked, loaded, and ready to go, the broader issues in the military are such that China can't risk any sort of escalation that could put it on a path to a major war. Again, China has been a militarily cautious nation for decades, in a way that is fundamental to its political institutions and its military proper. Without that threat of escalation, without a credible claim that a Taiwan invasion is on its way, Beijing is at serious risk of losing a large portion of its foreign policy toolkit. For example, it gets a lot harder to get the United States to spend increasingly ridiculous sums on its own defense apparatus to deter China if China stops looking like an adversary who needs to be deterred. It gets a lot harder to look menacing in front of Japan or South Korea if the missiles, airplanes, and ships that are supposed to devastate those nations in times of war instead don't seem to be functioning. And with that change, China's adversaries in East Asia and across the global West now have an opportunity to either take some breathing room on defense or otherwise shore up global pacts, alliances, and military capabilities in a way that sees China hemmed in for good. And indeed, that latter option may be precisely what's happening now. The United States, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, Vietnam, the Philippines, Indonesia, and Australia have all been presenting an increasingly unified front in the last few months, broadening their patchwork of defense treaties and collaborative military relationships. South Korea has firmed up its ties with both NATO and non-NATO nations as a growing global arms supplier, while both South Korea and Japan have increasingly enmeshed themselves into the Five Eyes intelligence network between Australia, the US, the UK, Canada, and New Zealand. Meanwhile, China has been alienated from many of its global partners around the world as its policy of debt trap diplomacy continues to lose steam and Russia remains persistent in attempting to chart its own independent course. Putting aside China's short-term expansion in the South China Sea, the broader momentum in the region appears to be a slow, steady shift toward the global West. At exactly the wrong time for the news to come out that China's prodigious military power isn't in any state to pose a threat. Now, as we conclude today's special episode, we've got to stress that no matter how inconsequential this scandal might initially seem, its repercussions are going to have a long-lasting impact on China's global aspirations and its relationship with the rest of the world. The allegation that China's missiles are filled with water is an eye-catching news story, but it's not the story. The real story is one of widespread, pervasive corruption where fuel-drained missiles and manufacturing silos are just the tip of the iceberg. If there's any prediction we'd like to make here at Warrior Graphics, it's that this particular headline will quickly be forgotten by most of the world to the extent that the world registered it at all. But it shouldn't be forgotten. Not by a long shot. Sometimes it's the small, forgettable moments like these that set off a much larger cascade of geopolitical change. And we've got a sneaking suspicion that this is one such moment.